Assalamu alaikum. We are talking about youth, money, aspiration, and everything really connected to life uh, that, that we live, and also to master the game, how to move in this life, how to be more beneficial, how to live fully, and how to benefit fully, how to utilize our skills and our talents. Usually this is a topic that youth want to discuss, but often they don't find anyone really who can guide them. And if they do end up talking with someone, usually they would end up discussing risk management, how not to take certain steps, how that is dangerous, how that will lead them nowhere, that there is no future, there is no end, uh, they will need the complicated things. At the end of this uh, discussion, usually this uh, risk management talk, it's all about fear, why you shouldn't do anything. And is it really surprising then when you turn to all these bad uh, habits, bad influences that is telling them opposite. You can be this, you can be that. It's all about benefits, all about pleasure, all about uh, what is that next step, how it's going to be and look and feel and, and so on. All of these emotional messages that are bombarding them from the media are creating exactly something that will work with their desires. So how do we sift through this? How do we understand? Number one, number one thing, there was a recently survey done uh, in Australia about uh, youth there. It was done by a Christian organization. They interviewed about 15,000 youth. What do you think was the number one concern that these youth have? First of all, first of all, what was apparent is a lack of passion that you have towards anything in life. There is no more passion in anything. Previous generation lived through uh, certain wars, uh, troubles here and there. Even they stop caring about the environment. They don't care anymore about trees. What is going on with the green youth? Number one concern that you have is financial economy. Most of them live through the global financial crisis. They saw their parents lose their jobs. And now many are thinking when they look at the future in much uncertain terms. What they want to do is, is to work help their parents. They see them silently struggling. So they see the test that comes from money and the wealth and insecurities. And isn't this exactly what Shaitan played with our great, great, great grandfather when he told him, eat this, take this, and you'll be like angels? He was trying to hit him in his heart where he felt uncertain. To, to, to bring this uncertainty, uh, this, this almost to sell him like insurance policy. If you take this, you'll be like angels, immortal. You don't have to worry about anything. And today we are, we are hit in the same way because of these crises and recessions and so on. Unfortunately, what does not help, especially among the youth, that m most of information, 80% comes from the Internet. I mean, Internet is... Is, is everywhere. They, they, we are bombarded. And 80% of the people get this information from these sources. And then the next source is the parents and anyone else. Now, how do you evaluate intentions and understanding that come from these places? This is something that was clearly communicated uh, to us. And even Quran, when it talks about test, it says, surely will it test you with something uh, of fear and hunger. So in this, this is, of course, we are translating, and, 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 and this fear and hunger we see uh, uh, around us, especially highlighted in this global financial crisis, and then some loss of wealth and lives and the fruits. So we see that these things play a major, uh, major role in how our youth feels. So when we are discussing these things with youth, we have to take into consideration that it cannot just be advice where we are frightening them. They are already frightened. They already live under the stress. They are already looking at the economy. Uh, now in the news, the double t deep recession, trip, uh, triple deep recession. They are already terrified. The media and everything is bombarding them with headlines that even they think, if I even go to school, what will I do? There is no hope, there is no employment, especially if you go to the Muslim countries. Our economy is set up in the way where you can hardly break through. It is designed in a way that only few people can benefit. Ma majority, in fact, of GDP or, or economy is built around fossil fuels. GDP comes from oil, from, from these sorts of, uh, from, from 
from, from things that cannot absorb any more youth in these, the, these things. So we have to build new paradigm for, for, for the future where we will be able to accommodate the youth, the people with ideas in the new economy that will build new manufacturing, new services. As Professor Salem told us once, when they asked him, what is the best type of a gain, best way to make a profit, he said, so Salem, the best type of a gain is what you do with your own hands and every legitimate sale. In fact, as scholars dis describe these things, some talk this is like a manufacturing, agriculture. In reality, it is everything that is tangible. All of these things we as a society need, and we are very rich, we are very smart, and we have resources. So mixing these two and three components will help us to get to the stage of this entrepreneurial cycle where we will start new output, creating new economic opportunities that will foster this talent and utilize it and embrace it, give a playing level field for everyone need to participate. And this is that mental attitude where we bring people with money, people with skill together in the playing level field so that they all can grow. Now, the Professor Salem said, then, the be and every legitimate sale, because this is, this is what completes the cycle of entrepreneurship. Once you start building, contributing, and doing things, the natural step in that cycle is that you must sell it. It must be something that is beneficial. You see, we are not like uh, communism, whichever, uh, we, just pushing and, you know, structuring things. No, we want that this product, that the, what we are building is really benefiting, is really growing and benefiting society and employing people in the right way. So with this message, I leave you until next time. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>